Uh, good afternoon, folks. My name is Sean Konopinski. I am the User Experience Practice Manager for Infusion Development. Uh, by a show of hands, how many folks here caught the Bill Buxton keynote on Wednesday morning? All right, that's a good number. And how many folks didn't catch the Bill Buxton keynote on Wednesday morning because they were out partying too late on Tuesday night? You? Yeah. yeah, excellent. Well, I'm glad to see most of you are, are taking in the sessions. Bill Buxton did a great job of talking about uh, the importance of user experience design, uh, particularly how it enables innovation. I want to augment that today, talk about why user experience design is more important today than it was just a year or two ago, and then talk about how Infusion, the company that I work for, um, handles this and deals with the uh, additional importance of UX design by allowing our developers and our designers to work side by side throughout our software development lifecycle. And, and what we found that enables is both better product through innovation and the ability to reduce waste by throwing away less code. So why is user experience design more important today? Um, it's because the interfaces that we are designing and developing for are evolving. And, and as they evolve, uh, user experience design becomes more important. So looking back at the three key inflection points in uh, user interface history, we can see how it evolves and as a result why design has become more important. So let's just jump in. Start with command line interface. As we know, command line interface is a text-based interface. As a result, the behavior that it reinforces is recall. So we have to have a cache of uh, commands stored in our head in order to effectively navigate a command line interface. And the relationship between the physical input and the output in a command line is disconnected. So we type on the keyboard, uh, the machine does something in the background, spits out an output. And so the relationship between physically tapping the keys and the response that the system gives back at the end of a command is, is disconnected. And from a user experience design perspective, uh, there's really not a whole lot that we can affect in, in the command line. Uh, we can design the name of the command, uh, maybe design the parameters. But by and large, uh, this is an arena where uh, fully capable developers can, can design an experience. Moving along to graphical user interface, uh, we all know that a graphical a GUI is a graphical metaphor system. The behavior that's reinforced in GUI is recognition. So um, I click on a file folder, I'm given a list of files, scan the files, uh, find the one that I want, right click it, given a list of commands, uh, scan to find the command that I want and click that in order to actually execute anything on, uh, in a GUI. So it's through recognition uh, that we're able to navigate a GUI. And the relationship between the physical input and output in GUI is disconnected. So I move the mouse around, and uh, the, uh, the cursor moves on the screen. So there is a relationship there that's immediate, but it's disconnected because, or indirect, rather, because there, it's proxied uh, between a uh, mouse and keyboard. And in, in graphical user interface, this is really the first time where we saw user experience design playing a big role uh, in the creation of successful interfaces. And, and the reason is, is why we, we needed to design graphical metaphors that make sense, like file folders and desktops, who would have thought. Um, and we need to design for recognition, so creating icons, so, so people know that it's a trash bin versus a file folder. And, and we needed to start thinking about usability in a way that um, uh, how users would interact with the system because it's a mouse and keyboard. So, how would a system look if we you know, just skipped one small part, which was the uh, creating icons to facilitate recognition? Well, it looks pretty weird. And so here we are today. We're in natural user interface. And this is the final and third inflection point in the history. Um, natural user interface, the basis is objects, either virtual or real. As a result, uh, we have to facilitate intuition uh, to navigate the interface. So uh, the idea is to create uh, virtual objects in such a way that they have affordances that, or they are designed to be as close to the real world as possible so we can leverage intuition to be able to use them. And finally, the relationship uh, between our input and the output of the system is direct. So I, I put my finger down on the device and uh, I, I move it around and there's no more proxy. It's, it's a direct connection. I actually touch an object and I move it and the system responds in, in a direct manner. And so with NUI, now we have a whole new uh, complex 
set of issues that we need to deal with and we need to think about from a design perspective. Uh, we need to design our objects. We need to design them so they look real and act real. And if, if, if they don't, if we have these super real objects and really cool controls, we need to think about how to create them so they're intuitive, so they're easy to use. And so we use things like affordances that we can imbue into our objects so, so we ha they have that capacity. And finally, we need to start thinking about how does a user expect an interface to respond now that we have this notion of, of, of direct interaction and we're no longer proxied? Is, is there a change there? And so those are some of the things that we need to think about from a, from a natural user interface perspective. And um, to drive the point home, it's easy to see the opportunity for catastrophic failure uh, if we start to forget all of the experiences that we've learned through user experience design uh, on our, our current wave of devices. So how do we handle this? Uh, how do we handle this um, increased importance in natural user interface? Well, at Infusion, what we were able to do is we were able to uh, find a way for designers and developers to work side by side throughout the entire software development life cycle. And that made a huge difference. So what we have is we have this run-of-the-mill software development life cycle. And what we did is we bolted on this user experience design life cycle where designers come in right at the start really early and live throughout the software development life cycle. And what this enables is this enables us, as I said before, to really develop a better product and, and throw away less code. So how do we do that? Well, we start with concept ideation. And so I don't know if, have, who here is actually has an idea what concept ideation is? Okay. Concept ideation is something that happens right at the start of the project, and it's a really cool way to quickly iterate, develop a lot of ideas, very quick and very cheap. How do we do that? Through sketching. And sketching is a very powerful tool. By sketching, uh, we're able to uh, sketch user flows. Um, where, you know, where does a user traverse through a system? We're able to sketch an entire interface or maybe just some really cool component, some, some new user interface component that we want to try out. And the power of sketching also comes from the fact that everyone can do it. I don't care if you're a, a developer, a designer, uh, a PM, my grandmother. Everyone can come to the table and, and sketch. And the reason why that's really important is because when you start to get people together and you start to communicate these ideas and it's, it's a social environment, that is where innovation thrives because everyone's throwing ideas out on the table. And you can imagine what it would be like if you had to do this kind of collaboration, this prototyping uh, in a development phase, how much, how much that would cost, how cost prohibitive it would be, and as a result, how much code would be thrown away. So what we do is, once we have, you know, we've gotten all of our folks together, we've built out um, a whole bunch of concepts, we have an idea of, of where we want to go, we move into interaction design. And what interaction design is, is taking one or two concepts and really fleshing them out end to end. And there's a couple ways we do this. The first way is by creating site maps or user paths. Uh, and this is really a user flow. And what this is, is it, it really, it's an easy and quick way to judge the breadth and depth of the application and make sure you really have a, a decent idea of how to, how to map your application. But the heart of interaction design comes in wireframing. And a wireframing deck or a wireframing set is a way to capture all the states and all the transitions of your applications. And you, you might be sitting there thinking, well, wow, uh, that's a huge investment to make, uh, spending a lot of time thinking about every screen and every transition that, that my application needs to take. And the fact of the matter is, is that, yeah, you know what, it's an investment. But how many times have you been in a development cycle, you've developed a component, you've showed a prototype of it to a user, and they said, no, that's not really what I wanted, I was actually thinking more like this. Or how about, I have a great idea, why don't we, you know, instead of doing this way, why don't we go over here and do it this way? Well. Wireframing allows you to do that prototyping on a rough level relatively cheaply without throwing away any code. And so I'm showing two wireframes here that are taken from a set uh, that were the beginning design phase for a Surface project that we deployed uh, to Barclays in Piccadilly Circus in London. And it's interesting to note that this was a so second concept that we arrived at. So we did a first set of wireframes that was a completely different concept, went in a different direction, and only once we started to explore it were we able to say, you know what, this doesn't really feel right. Um, we need to go back and, and rethink this. So we were able to, you know, without having made much investment, 
crumple it up, throw it away, start over. And, and that's really the, uh, a lot of the power of wireframing.